So when I was in Iceland a couple of weeks ago, we went to this really interesting place called Friedmirror, and it's this tomato farm. And it's not your typical tomato farm, it's actually all under glass. So it's 50,000 square feet of hydroponic tomato growing, which I thought was pretty cool because in Iceland, it's, used, it's a temperate climate. It's like, you know, minus 10 to plus 15, but not the best for all year tomato growing. But this guy, um, his name was uh, Kuner uh, Arfner, and he has this farm that he's growing for about 20 years. And he's got um, several hundred tomato plants growing at any one time. They, they do 300 tons per year. Of tomato plant of tomato sales in Iceland, which I thought was just blew me away because I never thought they'd even grow tomatoes there at all because of the climate. But it's really cool. He's taking this opportunity when the, their business uh, in in the whole country wasn't doing very well, and after the financial crisis, and he's really ramped up his technology and automation of his farm where he can uh, remotely control whether a window opens or where the water gets to the plants. He's got uh, he's organized with the tour operators, which is becoming a big industry in Iceland now, to have the tour operators stop by by the busload to introduce people to his tomato farm. So not as only is he selling to multiple uh, grocery chains, but he's also taking advantage of tourists and the tourism industry that's booming in Iceland right now to have the tourists come by and check out his tomatoes. So it's not just, hey, here's all our tomatoes. He's actually got a little bistro there where they sell tomato soup. Uh, that they made, make fresh there and, and fresh bread from their little bakery and beer and, and other food. So, um, and bathrooms, they've got tons of bathrooms because they realize that with tourism, um, they need to be accommodating. There's 60 to 70 people coming on every bus, need somewhere for people to go when they're there. So it was really cool. He kind of stood up and he gave everybody um, like a, a description of, of what, what he does, how, how him and his family do it. And they employ bees. He says their tireless workers are the bumblebees. And he has 600 bees uh, running in his, or flying through his, his uh, farm at any one time. He shows this box of bees and these bumblebees. You're sitting there. We, we had some soup. And by the way, it's not cheap either. It's a ten, it was 1,000 ISKs or kroners. So that's about 10 bucks per bowl. And everybody there had soup. So he's making a lot of money on the soup. His bees are working for free, which is pretty cool, and they're flying all around as, as you're there. So I thought the guy's really tenacious and innovative to have this um, farm uh, for growing tomatoes in Iceland. He's doing 18% of all Iceland's tomatoes. It's like, now I don't even like tomatoes, but I do like excellence. So it was pretty cool to see. And, uh, you know, his whole family's involved in it. His kids are serving the, serving the food and things like that, too. So uh, just really innovative kind of guy. I just love the entrepreneurial spirit that some people have, just creating something that uh, you might not think would be successful, but through determination and hard work and, and tenacity, they're just making it happen. It's a real success for them. So it's pretty cool to check out.